Hi, my name's Cathy Millett and we're still looking at culverts. So this is my favourite technique for doing landscapes and I use it all over my layout, um, upstairs when I get around to doing that. And what I really like about it is it's very quick and easy, not too messy and um, cheap. So I basically take I'll say that when I'm not squinting. I basically take some newspaper, scrunch it up and put plaster cloth over it. Now, that's too big. So. This is just to give it a bit of height, otherwise the plaster cloth just basically um, sags. Obviously it's a bit bigger on a layout and it doesn't really matter that these, these can pull out afterwards. They're just there for now to just stop this collapsing down. So the next thing I do is cut out my plaster cloth. Now, this is normally quite large in upstairs, but you know, a small diorama like this doesn't have to be too big. So I will just do it and I get it so it edges on nicely. Now these concrete ones, sometimes they sit and the earth goes over them a little bit. Um, so you could put the, um, this over the top, but in most cases, they'll actually be um, sat just about here. So I'm probably gonna do them up to the edge, but not onto. Those of you wanting firmer undergirdings rather than a bit of loose paper that might fall out, then I can recommend a few techniques. One of which is to just use strips of card and you, you move them back and forth, wiggle them so that they're quite loose. You glue them at both ends and then you can use them as a form and the plaster cloth rests on top of them. Alternatively, you can use blue foam, which I've covered in a, a, another video. Or if you don't want to use plaster cloth at all, you can use sculptor mold. Now that's quite expensive in the UK and to fill this amount of area with it, is probably a worry to me. And also the foam core has card in it and I'm worried the damp would affect it. Okay, and next comes the simplest part of the technique. And that's just literally spraying it with water. So I'm gonna do one bit at a time so that they all neatly sink in. Because this is plaster, it's set by water. And at this point, yeah, this is why you need the paper. You can see it starts to just shrink down a bit. Ooh, there's a dribble there. Wow, when did you decide to start leaking? You have your favorite little spray things and they work incredibly well. You put them on a video and they just go to pot. Right, so let's put that on there just to hold here. Obviously, um, on my layout, the, um, the paper is a little bit more solid when I put it in place than it is here, but because I'm just going to take it off again in a minute, I'm not in a huge rush to, to get it perfect. Now, before you start thinking, this is all just going to sag, and that's not enough. Oops. It isn't enough. You need to put two or three layers on. So if your first one isn't quite right, it doesn't matter, because you can put more layers on. In different directions, I like to make sure them all overlap each other, like this. And when you feel that it's, it's almost there, but you don't want to disturb it anymore, just leave it to set. It doesn't take long actually, it's plaster. Move on to the next one and come back to that one again. And you can put a bit more on where it's all smoothed out and looks a lot better. But that's just my initial sort of attempt to get some kind of bone structure underneath. So this one, still a bit, bit soft. So I'm just gonna leave these for a couple of minutes to set a bit, and I'm gonna put another layer on. 
So these are more or less dry. So I'm just going to put the next layer on. You can see they've lifted a bit. I think I knocked the paper. And all I'm going to do on this one is make sure it really does bed in a lot better. Those first ones are almost just like the foundations. This one, I want it really to bed into itself and create a nice plaster. And you do that by rubbing it a bit more and getting it to just thick, which you couldn't do before because you'd have just given way. So I did another two or three layers for robustness. You do need that or it becomes very easy to dent it later by mistake. I also made sure there was as few holes as possible at the end so any top layer didn't fall through. fiddly but there they all all sat and the next stage will put a lot more water on to set them if you're worried that I haven't put enough water on um, by the time I've done all my scenery and everything else there's plenty on there excellent so this is now all dry um, so I'm gonna put my plaster of, away on one side and what I'm gonna do is just trim these because yeah they stick out a little bit and because they're thin they're easy enough to do that so I'm gonna trim them in line with the base of my diorama so they don't look too messy. Um, it's just me being fussy, you don't need to. And I'm gonna put any paper out that's still in there. Just be careful when you trim them that you don't totally break them. Oops. There we go. And this one, I might cut this one underneath. Now, I find a lot that, um, I certainly find it on my layout, that plaster doesn't actually stick to card. And so what I tend to do is put a glob of glue underneath, answer to everything. And I'm about to go and put a whole layer of um, um, grout and other things on top, which will hold all of this together in a way that perhaps isn't apparent at the moment. So there we go. There we go, so there's one. And now we're on to the scenery layer. Now, those of you who know me know that I like grout. That's what you need. So, it doesn't take much to realise that grout won't stick to dry, um, well, to dry stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it quite heavily again with this. And the trick now is not to get it onto your um, culverts. If you're um, worried about that then I recommend masking it but I'm not really a masking type of girl so I'm just gonna go with this technique. And because I'm putting it on with a spoon here we go and some of it will go through the holes if you've done a bit better job on the um, sort of mixing of the plaster, then it's, it's not an issue. So I'm just going to carefully put it up to the edge. This is the first edge of our... Um... And you do need to keep putting the water on. you can do is you can just brush it off here. You want to brush it into there. Just settle it down. And because we're going to have quite a bit of soil in here, if a little bit gets on here it's not an issue. And if you're worried about it sticking, just a light dusting of, this has actually got a bit of IPA in the water. So people have been asking me how much IPA I have. I have 99%, 99.9% IPA, and I normally mix it about a third, two thirds water. So it's quite strong, 
especially on fine ground, to find that you do need it. If you have a more dilute IPA, which is very common, I mean, I've used rubbing alcohol, it's quite easy to, to find and use, then I do recommend that you, um, you consider having a um, much stronger mix. Now, I am going to put glue on this as well, rest assured. But for now, I'm just after covering my white. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this now for a second. I'm going to just spray it with a bit more water because um, this is grout and grout does actually have cement in. So technically it should set itself, but I believe that when it happens. I like to make sure there's a bit of glue. So get that well soaked and then make sure all of this is brushed off. And then what I'm going to do is um, is get my glue. Okay, glue. So to make my glue, I fill a bottle, quite a lot full of water. And this is just normal Hobbycraft craft PVA. And I just put a wadge in. Oops. Well, honestly, sometimes I do it really thick, sometimes I do it really thin. I found for grout, I tend to do it a bit thinner. And then this is a dripper bottle, well used as you can see, it's uh, just a bit gunky inside. And this just slides on and then you give it a good shake, which I'm going to go and do over the sink. Okay, so I'm just going to spray so it's nice and damp, it's got a bit of IPA going into it, which will help everything flow. And then I just drip. And this is why I do it on newspaper. It will all wick through, but it will also run downhill. And occasionally you get that. That's not quite enough shaking. I actually overfilled it. If you leave it a little bit empty, it will mix up a bit better. Now, all of my... Um, scenery is done with a very wet mix and I have occasionally pulled it off and found it a bit mouldy underneath so just warn that make sure you do dry this all out properly um, before you put a really impervious layer on top and if you're like this and you're thinking oh that's a lot of water filling out that's why I do it on a newspaper um, so there we go so that's one done and I'll carry on and do the rest yeah, I'm going to leave these to set. Um, if they don't look quite as glued as I like or there's any ball patches, I might come back and fill a bit more in. But to be honest, by the time I've got the grass and everything else on here, this is only a base sort of coat. So there we go, leaving those to dry, as always. Well, they've been drying for, well, a week now and they're quite solid, very useful, all set properly. And although you can see a bit of plaster still, what I'm going to do is leave the next steps to the next video because otherwise this is going to get far too long. So tune in to part two to see what I do next with these dioramas to finish them off. In this week's adventure, Millscale Cathy has a sticky encounter. I'm I guess Millscale Cathy escaped the deadly sticky mud, but will she live down the embarrassment? Well, 
I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on how to start off your mini culvert dioramas. And if you're enjoying it, then do check back next week for the second instalment. If you are enjoying it, subscribe to me on YouTube and you won't miss an episode. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modelling, or on my website, www.kathymillett.co.uk. See you next week.